welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We've got a special episode today, and the reason why it's special is I think we crossed a big milestone for the channel itself. Now, what you don't hear on any of my videos is you don't hear me asking for you to subscribe or asking me to like the videos or any of the YouTube common stuff. And the reason for that is I figure if you like the content, you're smart enough on your own to subscribe or you'll like it on your own. If you don't like the content, you might not do anything or you might make some negative comments. It's okay. But I figure I'll leave that up to you. The content will speak for itself. I started the channel in May. It's now about mid-August. And we reached 100 subscribers, which is really cool. Everybody says your first 100 subscribers is the hardest. And we did it without asking anybody to subscribe. So that's, that's really cool. So everybody that subscribed and that uh, likes the channel and is watching the channel, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I do have something special planned, kind of corny, it's right up my style, for the 100th subscriber. Uh, I tried to contact the 100th subscriber, I don't know if I was successful or not. Uh, so if you're the 100th subscriber or you know that you're the 100th subscriber, uh, fire me off an email and we'll talk and, and see if we can set you up with something. Uh, if you already have subscribed and you're part of those 100 subscribers and you're interested maybe in something, if the 100th subscriber doesn't contact me, uh, please contact me and we're going to make a video for the 100th subscriber. So that's going to be cool, that's coming up. We also got a video request from uh, one of our viewers, uh, I believe his name is Shem, if I pronounced that right. Uh, if I didn't, I apologize. So we're going to do a learning command that's specific to the Fidals. I'm going to try to shoot that later this week as well. So today's episode, we're going to talk about lubrication. And this is going to be a little bit of continuation on the long series of videos we did on how you align one of these beasts. Uh, lubrication is the single most important item in machine maintenance, and it's also one of the greatest causes of any machine failure. Any moving machine, you're going to have rotating parts, sliding parts, bearings, if you don't lubricate those parts, they're going to wear prematurely, they're going to break down, they're going to get crud in them. Bad things happen from there. That's exactly what happened to this machine. Uh, this machine does not have an automatic oiler on it. You have to grease this machine. You have to use the correct lubrication. So refer to your machine's manuals. Uh, this machine wants to have a high pressure bearing grease uh, for the bearings, for the linears and the ball, ball screws. So not only is lubrication important, but the correct lubrication. Now the X axes on this machine, the Zerk fittings are kind of tucked up under the table, so they're very easy to miss. It's also easy to forget about points that we have to lubricate. What about our tool changer? If you have a pallet changer, uh, the spindle maybe, you might have an error missed oiler spindle. The chain, everybody forgets to lubricate the chain on the counterweights, that's a roller chain. If it starts seizing up on you, it's going to make the Z-axis do wonky things and you're going to be scratching your head. It's going to work sometimes great and then other times you'll have bad parts. So make sure you lubricate your chain. So let's just go over to the machine and we'll, uh, we'll grease it up and we'll talk about the grease machine and the oiler machine, some of the things that you have to check for while you have the way covers off. Very important, you may lose lubrication on maybe one linear truck or one ball screw and not know it until the ball screw fails and it's too late. So let's go to the machine and check it out. So we're looking at the side of the machine. So this is X, this is Y. And you can see that there's two grease blocks here. There's one here, this one's for X, and when the way cover's on, it's tucked up underneath that way cover. And then down here, this one's for Y. Now you'll have a similar setup with a auto lubed machine with an oil machine, but instead of having Zerk fittings on these blocks, what you'll have is you'll have one line that comes in from the oiler, and then you'll have a bunch of metering valves on there that then go to each truck or each gib, and then one will also go to the ball screw. 
okay? With a grease machine, it's pretty easy. You put grease in the Zerk fittings, and they grease your bearings. What can happen, though, is if one of these tubes break, then the grease won't actually make it to the bearing. So while your weight covers are off, you want to grease the machine and verify that the grease is actually making it to the truck or the ball screw. With an oil machine, a similar thing can happen is that the tube can come off or the tube can break and then the oil just falls out into your coolant. But there's an additional issue that these metering valves, if you get some contamination in your oil, the metering valves can plug up. So also with an oiled machine, while you have your weight covers off, it's important that you trigger your oiler and make sure that you're actually getting oil to all your gibs or your trucks and your ball screw. If the ball screw or gibs or trucks run dry, they will very rapidly deteriorate and destroy themselves. So this is a very critical item that, that has to be done. If you have a greased machine like this, refer to your manual. Most machines like to be greased on a weekly basis if they're being run full time or more. So about every 50 hours roughly, uh, you should be greasing these if you have a grease machine. We're at the top of the machine now. Now this is the chain for our counterbalance. I hope you can hear me okay. The spindle fan for the spindle motor is right there. So the chain for our counterweights for our Z-axis needs to be lubricated as well. Now what you don't want to do is we don't want to use the same bearing grease that we used downstairs on our bearings. All that's going to do is coke up the chain it's going to pick up dirt and chips and debris and then it's going to wear the chain out. What we want to use is we want to use a specific chain loop. This is just the stuff that I personally like. Again, your machine manual can refer you to what the machine manufacturer likes. But keep in mind that these this is a roller chain, so there's little bearings in there. If you just put grease on these, it's just going to sit on the surface. The chain lube is specifically designed as a penetrating oil so that it will get inside the roller bearings and then keep those roller bearings on each chain link nice and lubricated. If this chain dries out, then your counterweight's not going to move up and down nice and you'll get some really wonky stuff happen on the Z-axis. Keep in mind while you're lubricating this, this machine has 20 inches of travel on the Z. There's about four feet of chain here between going down this way over the top and then going down this way. So while you're lubricating this chain, you've got to move the Z head up and down so that you can get all the links. I hope you enjoyed our little video on uh, lubrication. And again, at the beginning of the video, thank you for everybody that subscribed. Uh, we'll see if we can keep the channel growing and we'll see if we can keep it going with some good content. Remember, lubrication is very important and machine cleanliness is very important. If you notice in many of my videos, you'll see my machine is almost always cleaned out. There are some rare exceptions, but for the most part, at the end of every day, we always shovel all the chips out. Now, this machine is, doesn't have a chip conveyor, so you have to manually clean the machine out. So it takes a little bit of work and effort. But by keeping your machine clean, lubricated, and maintained, it's going to cost you a little bit more overall in the long haul, but at the end of it, it's going to end up being cheaper. Remember, the parts for these machines are, are fairly expensive. So the reason why my weight covers are still off is I'm doing a little bit of troubleshooting on my Z-axis. My Z-axis ball screw has been worn. I know it's worn. It's showing more and more backlash. So in the not too distant future, you'll probably see a video for a Z ball screw replacement. I got to get one on order and then have it come in and then we'll I'll do a video when I actually uh, do the replacement. It, it's not unusable yet but it's getting close and I want to make sure that it gets it gets repaired before the machine you know goes down and then costs me more money this you know loss of production is not a good thing so thanks again for watching and we'll see you in some more videos uh, later this week